Well, I'll be dipped. Again, not 25 minutes after I posted my last turbo video, KC Turbos puts a comment on there saying, I've got boost leaks and it should be making way more boost than that. So yeah, I contacted them by email and they uh, gave me a big long essay of things to go through checking for boost leaks and exhaust leaks. Uh, the first thing to check, of course, is that you're not leaking exhaust before the turbo. Uh, normally you would just do a brake stand, put it on a super race uh, tune that's super smoky, do a brake stand, and if you've got smoke billowing out by the turbo, then clearly you've got a pre-turbo exhaust leak. Uh, that's difficult for us to do because it's a manual, so uh, they suggested putting a, a camera and a flashlight under the hood and taking for a rip. So we did that, and fortunately for us, no smoke. So I'd already had those connections all tight pre-turbo. And so the next thing, of course, is to make sure you don't have boost on your uh, cold side. And so the way to do that is to pressurize your whole intake from the uh, turbo, the intercooler, all the boots, all the tubing up to the intakes. You want to make sure you don't have any leaks. Uh, and I'd done this uh, some months ago to see if that was my problem. Uh, but I only put it up to about 20 PSI bef and before I started getting weirded out that's too much pressure. Um, but KC Turbos emailed back and said, you, if you expect a boost to 35, it better hold pressure at 35. So I tried to get some uh, four inch PVC caps to make my own uh, pressure tester, but it's extremely hard to find uh, in this neck of the Mexico. So uh, I did the right thing and jammed a oil filter in the silicone boot, zap strapped it on as tight as I could, and I got it up to about 24 PSI before that thing shot across the campground like a rocket. So KC Turbos uh, stepped up and they said, stop screwing around, we'll send you guys a care package. And three days later, guess what shows up by DHL? Contents. Zwei Hemden, Aufkleber, Hut und Stiefel. Boots. Boots. Yeah. Gracias. All right. Du machst die Mexik. Das sind die Mexiko. Shirt, large. Shirt 3x large. Stealer. Ooh, hat. Wo ist der Stiefel? Das ist Hydra. See. Oh. oh. And das Stickers. See. Tour 8.5. See. Tour 8.5. You guys think you're sending me swag, I'm gonna wear it and shill your products? <laughs> yes. Did I cover Casey? Where is Casey? Uh, right in the middle. Here? Yeah. Is that under my beard? Yeah. <laughs> we have to cut your beard. I'm not cutting my beard. <laughs> okay. Do you want a KC shirt? Uh, do you speak to me? Probably. But it's black and it's hot right now. I know, it's gonna get hotter because it's Mexico. All right, the star of the show. This is the uh, boost tester sent by KC Turbo. We're gonna plug this over the uh, intake of our, right on the turbocharger, the inlet, and then pressurize using our onboard air, which comes out right here conveniently at the bumper and pressurize it till we get to 35, 40 PSI, close it off and make sure it holds pressure. Die Hemden sind nicht von Casey Turbo, die sind von American Apparel. Ooh, muy bien. So KC Turbo said the first thing to do is get rid of the wastegate solenoid. Their wastegate is designed with a mechanical spring that is tuned to open at the correct pressures. So uh, you don't even need the wastegate solenoid, which works out great because ours was leaking really bad around the boot down here on the spider. Uh, I put a clamp on it to, to seal up that leak. Uh, when I was testing with the oil filter, but they said it's not needed, just get rid of the whole thing. Alright, so to plug off that hole, I got uh, two vacuum uh, caps from AutoZone and a worm drive gear. 
And uh, I'm just gonna install that here. These small cavities are not meant for gorilla hands. You wanna torque those to right to 300 foot pound Newton meters. And uh, I've also uh, clamped off the uh, map sensor hose at this end. It would leak if I wiggled it, even at 20 PSI using the air filter. So that's been capped off. And now let's take off the intake and put the power to her. This was a real fight to get on last time, so I'm not expecting to have a good time. Give it my little Austrian minion. It's hard. It's coming up. Why the heck is it so stuck? Wait, 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 wait. That shouldn't be this hard. No, there we go. Stacy. Oh, all right, not Stacy. KC. Stacy. This is a beefy unit. I don't know if you guys can see in there, but those threads are still a half inch remaining of threads on top of what they put it through. So I imagine this is a three quarter or a one inch plate that they've machined and, and uh, fit with these fancy valves and gauges. So first a little spittle. Uh, 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 uh. A little one of these. Yes, this must be the See. And you reuse the boot clamp from there. Well, that went on a lot easier than the big L-shaped boot. Das Boot. Steven. For all the peanut gallery people out there, that uh, torque setting was set to minimum. Keep your shirt on. Good and solid. Or as an Austrian might say, gluten tight. Ah. Uh. I'm humping it. <laughs> all right, now for compressed air. Could you use our handy dandy bumper mount? 150 PSI. You want to see the video about our ARB compressor? You can click up here. It's uh, in post. All right, so pressurize, and on the odd astronomical chance that that thing blows off under pressure, I'm just gonna put a towel there to maybe save my finger. Uh, maybe have a counter so it doesn't push off. It should be fine. Yeah. Five PSI. Ten. Same. Fifteen. Twelve. Ten. Should be fine. I'm okay. Yeah. Should be fine. Unfortunately. It's like firecrackers. We smashed the gauge. Safety first. Safety first. Good thing I put the towel there. Yeah. All right. Do you well, unfortunately, this gauge has had the biscuit. It's showing 20 PSI. We'll be back after I don't, source myself a new meter. Don't spit on it next time. Got it. Very clear. Yeah, it's eighth inch, not quarter. Eighth inch threads, not quarter inch. It's not going to work. Eight inch is more or less. Six millimeters? More or less. How much PSI can you look? One? Oh no. That's Did it go up? scale. That's the uh, KPA. Maybe five. It goes up? Oh yeah, tiniest bit. Five. This is, this is YouTube gold, Miguel. And if I put it on my... Nope. Super tight this time. Might even up the setting one more. 
So if it's not abundantly clear already, I just pulled this apart and bent the mechanism back in place. It's not perfect, it doesn't quite sit at zero, but I'm gonna give it a try. And failing that, I'll just read the boost off the dash. And how fortuitous, I had a don't kill me bro towel there. So I'm holding 15 or 20 PSI here on my bodgered gauge, but I'm going to put this mic down in the valley and you can hear a little leak. Time to get out the soapy water, I guess. That's a bit much. Well, yeah. Okay. Once again, into the breach. Oh, that's good. Ah, there's a leak. Oh yeah. Right here, Kara. Twenty-five psi. Twenty-seven. leaking out of the boot itself at the ball valve here. So that's coming out from the inside of the connector on the intake air temperature sensor. So I'll need to order a new one of those. But those are the only two leaks I, I noticed, so... What's the first one? Uh, the the leak tester itself is the leaking boot, yeah. around the boot. And this piece you need to reorder, you cannot just seal it? I could try. All right, so I've pulled out the intake air temperature sensor. This sits in the spider that goes down to the intake manifold. And best I could tell, it was not leaking through the threads, but through this uh, joint here where the plastic electrical connector meets the brass section. So, when in Mexico, do as the Mexicans do. I'm gonna MacGyver this together at least long enough to get us a new part. All right, pro tip for delicate application of epoxy is carry around some cheap little syringes. Uh, I always cut the two halves of the plungers apart because I seem to never get them in equal amounts. Put that part A in, and then the same amount of part B. Perfect. And here's the pro tip part. Get yourself a, just a tail of a zip tie, the tail end of a zip tie. Tuck it up in a drill. That'll be good and mixed. Wipe it off best you can. Get your syringe in there. And then this is the worst part. You gotta let the glue all settle to the back, just like your vaccine. So then once you've got your epoxy ready, now I'm gonna fill this cavity in between the brass and the plastic. and all the way around it. Being careful not to get it on the sensor itself, that little black knob. And then this area here, it's quite hollow inside there. So this should take quite a lot. There we go. I'll let that cure. It's a five minute epoxy. By no means is this permanent or will I leave this for any length of time but it'll get us by for testing it today and until I can get a new one here.
see you in five minutes. All right, so here's his. The epoxy's all cured up, and I've put some high quality gas fitters, Teflon tape on there, PTFE, I think. And uh, let's put her back in, see if we can get any more leaks. Rolling? Rolling. Rolling. <laughs> All right, so this, uh, I pulled this out just to see it. Um, it's fully three quarters inch thick plate that they've machined ribs into the side for extra grip. Although it was leaking a little bit around the perimeter. I'm not sure if I was supposed to tighten this myself or if it came specced. All right, let's try this again. I'm scared. Don't be scared, Miguel. So again, this gauge is going to be out because it's all crushed on the inside. But it still sort of works. And I'm going to run inside and show you on the dash that it's holding pressure. Ah, look, the, the hose which connects there, the blue one, is blowing up too. Correct. This so one, there we're at 27 PSI. Let's go right to 30. It is leaking out of somewhere. It sounds like it's at the heads or the exhaust. Let me show you guys some stuff. This is our crankcase ventilation. Still rolling? Still rolling. Rolling on the river. Too much, Miguel. Too much. <laughs> All right. So I've got the mic out here. I'm just going to boost this back up to 30. And then put this in this tube. So that's coming from our point piece ventilation. So I can actually feel it on my hand. Uh, so that's coming through the crankcase past the rings. So there's nothing I can do about that. Perhaps uh, that'll see a lot better if the engine's up at operating temperatures. Let's give that a try. Hot, hot, hot. So I just had the engine running for about five minutes on top of the preheat. I saw the engine turn over a half a turn. About the same. Doesn't seem to matter that the engine's hot. Five minutes later. Well, it turns out a PhD doesn't ensure you don't walk around half the day with your shirt on backwards. But we've got that resolved. Now, uh, just one 10 millimeter bolt down here on the firewall, and that disconnects the uh, engine harness from the engine computer. And we head in here and unbolt it from the fireball. And then just two more bolts up in here. And this slides out like this. And then we need to open this up. And here's the TS6 position chip. And that one just had a connector here that went to the dial up on the dash. So now let's install the new one. All right, so got everything unpacked here. There's the new chip and the cable. Don't need that yet. Basically what you need to do uh, when you first get this out, if this is your first time installing one, is this card edge connector here needs to be cleaned up real well. And the way the instructions say to do it is uh, use the butt end of the brush, the wooden connector, and just scrape off the little silicone uh, conformal coating. These are coated with a rubber silicone product to prevent corrosion. So use that to get all the, the bulk of it off, and then some light brushing with the brass brush till it's otherwise nicely clean. And then just ever so slightly with the provided scouring pad. And it's important to do it on both sides, of course. 
Um, I've already done mine, like I said, for the last install on that chip, on the uh, other chip we were using. So mine's good and clean already, and I'm getting down to the copper already, so I'm gonna stop there. And then uh, electrical cleaner, contact cleaner, that's gonna get you 10 extra horsepower. So very important. If you're going through these steps, you may as well get the extra horsies. And, oh yeah, nice and clean. Once more, and then slide in the new chip. Now these types of uh, card edge uh, connectors, uh, in, in my other videos I was getting a lot of criticism that these kind that uh, go card edge are going to have a much higher risk of damaging the engine computer. And in, based on my research, everything I've done online, looking all around, uh, that only happens if this card comes loose while the engine's running and disconnects. So I'm going to put just a dot of uh, two-sided tape behind the PCB and attach it to this large chip here. So I'll show you that. All right, so I've got a little square of 3M VHB, very high strength bond tape. And I'm just gonna put this right on the back of the chip. That is some sticky stuff. And then I'll pull the second half off here in just a second. Not moments later do I find that they've included a nice Velcro square, but I think I would prefer the, uh, the tape for my use. So next uh, we connect the cable. Uh, this is just a ribbon cable looks like 16 pin or so, 14 pin, uh, ribbon cable which connects the program selector to the board. Make sure it's in there nice and secure. And then the USB recharge reprogram cord. They do sell an optional 90 degree cord which I didn't think about asking for but I think this will fit. Give it a try here. Yeah, that'll work. But before I stick this permanently, they also include, if you don't already have, some zip ties and there's a, a little hole on the PCB so you can stick these wires in place nice and permanent like That seems fine. I'm gonna give it a couple in and outs just to make sure it makes good connection. And then press down on the USB socket. Nice and secure in there now. Now just put it back. All right, then just put the cover on. And torque to 750 foot-pounds, or two ugga -duggas. All right, so I got the whole computer put back in its little holster here, and the wires temporarily hanging out the back. This is always the part I had the most problems with, especially on a manual transmission. There is a clutch pedal in the way. There we go. And two more nuts. All right, for this one, I need to get this little 10 millimeter bolt way up in there where my hands don't fit on the end of a socket. And so here's a pro tip for you. Get your socket, some paper towel, and jam it in there. That'll hold your bolt in the socket. And you can feed it up. And I know you guys aren't going to be able to see any of this, but trust me, this is a lot easier. I've lost my paper towel piece, but it wouldn't be the end of the world if you did. But there it is. And that's how you hold a bolt in a socket when you got hands the size of apes. All right, so next is just connecting the ribbon cable to the program selector and I'm going to mount mine right here where the old TS6 was. Speaking of which, if anyone needs a TS6, 
I have one I'm not using. Leave a comment in the doobly doo. Or send me an email. Link on the website. I'm just mounting this very, very temporarily, quick and dirty, to get this video done. I'm going to come back and route these wires more nicely later. Something like that should get us on the road. And uh, the USB cable, of course, can't be removed. They do sell a nice dash connector with a female plug that you can plug in a A to B connector, but I'm just gonna roll this one up and, and tuck it behind my kick panel, and then I just unroll it when I need it. All right, guys, today is tomorrow. I got this uh, front end all buttoned up just before the rains came. Got the power hungry performance PHP Hydra installed at the last moment and now today the task is to get out the laptop Lappy 386 and I'm going to show you how to program the chip. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is you connect the Hydra with the USB cable. I just have a, an extension cable from the unit in my kick panel and it plugs in USB to the Compi 386. Uh, once that's going uh, I'll just throw this on screen here for you. You get out, at first you download the Hydra Flash software. It, uh, it connects via USB and then you need this serial number in the lower right corner and you need to provide that to any uh, custom tuners if you're getting custom tunes built for your truck. Um, but in this first step or the first method that's not required, uh, it also checks that your vehicle key is off. You can see down here, if I turn on uh, my ignition, you can see the it lights up. So it is actively monitoring that you don't have your engine on or uh, the key on, because you wouldn't want to program this while it's on. And then uh, the next part, very simple, there are 15 slots for different programs in here, and you can just click on here, click change, and it goes to the server and gets every possible calibration for every possible vehicle, but this hex code needs to line up to your engine computer. Uh, so there's a very quick process for that. May as well show you. Uh, you go into tools, box hex conversion, and then there's a code written, printed right on the label, right on the side of your engine computer, and you enter it here, uh, and then you'll see this hardware type lines up and it provides you with this hex code. This is the hex code you need. I have mine copied to the clipboard, so we'll skip that step and change uh, the software in position one, or put a new program in position one. So there's my uh, calibration code, and you can see there's 20-ish programs available for my combination of engine, transmission, everything. And uh, so these are the these are the stock calibrations that you can get for free from uh, the PHP Hydra software out of the gate without any custom special programming. Uh, in my case, uh, I don't need any of these high idle ones because when we bought our truck it was originally a crane with a knuckle boom crane on the back uh, and it has a PTO uh, takeoff off the transmission and a PTO controller down here. So I can set my RPM whatever I want for warm up or whatever anyway. So the ones that would probably be most uh, interesting to me is factory stock, so I have something to go up against. Theft mode, meh, whisper mode might be nice for parking lots and such, drive through, like we could ever get this thing through drive through. Uh, driver. So that's what, five? And those are straight out of the gate, free with the PHP Hydra when you buy it. Now, the really slick thing about this uh, this chip as compared to our old chip, which I have here, that would need to be sent away for custom codes if you wanted it programmed by uh, someone who dynoed your truck or if you, if you want some better tunes or something tuned specifically to your turbo and injectors. And so for that, they give you this option here to load custom tunes from, uh, from custom tuners. So KC Turbos was very kind to offer us uh, but it looks like seven codes here um, that are tailored for our truck and 
the Hydra serial number in the bottom right corner there that I showed you. So let's see, they've got a daily driver. We'll put that in that slot. Drag ripper. Eco mileage. Uh, here's a high idle, 1100 RPM high idle. I don't really need that. Like I said, I've got the PTO controller. Uh, we'll put it on hot street. And in addition, uh, Dan from SDK Performance uh, was happy to hear we had a Hydra. So he also revised some of his tunes that we were running on that uh, TS6 chip. And so he sent us, again, a high idle. Uh, engine operating temperature kick, meaning it'll uh, hold a higher RPM until it reaches engine operating temperature, or you can uh, kick the throttle like an old style choke and it'll turn off. Uh, I only have, what, four slots left, so let's pick some good ones here. Uh, 40 tow. Eighty daily driver, low boost fueling. Unfortunately, I can't use low boost fueling because I don't have a uh, a boost fueler, uh, a regulator that regulates the fuel to the map sensor. So that one probably isn't going to be the best for me, uh, as is. But we'll try it. Uh, we'll put street rocker on there. One more, hundred and forty horse. So now I have tunes selected for all 15 positions. I just click program and it goes through programming calibrations. And through the magic of television, they're all uploaded and ready to go, all 15 spots. Three days later. Anyway, it's been a few days. Uh, I realized that position zero is stock bypass. And so I reprogrammed the chip, just reorganized things a little more and got one other code on there. So these are the positions of the codes that I'm running right now. And uh, I'm just making my way towards a little stretch of highway and we're going to take a few runs at it here and see what kind of numbers we can put up. So I should point out that all of my gauges are in metric. It's kilometers per hour and, uh, and meters in altitude. So we are at about 1,500 meters or 4,500 feet elevation where we are here. I got a, uh, gonna do this thing, which I despise when people do, but. Gonna do it. All right, so we're not gonna be able to do all the tunes. Uh, that's just gonna be far too long of a video and I don't have enough highway to do this. So, I'm going to do a few of them. So this one is tune number three. Oh, I'm going to wait for some more cars to pass so I can get a good pull here. And hopefully you guys up on this uh, com camera here can see these gauges okay. I know that the LED displays flicker quite badly. And I tried for about four hours to get camera settings that would work for this. But I can't. So you got to deal with it. So that got up to about 1200 degrees. Hopefully you can see it here. This uh, gauge right here is our exhaust gas temperature sensor. The turbo sounds beautiful, uh, but that was just on a uh, tune three, which I believe I have is strenuous tow from the stock PHP Hydra tunes. I'm gonna find a safe spot to pull over. I'll take another pull at it. So here on my other screen, you can see we're, we're gonna go to seven, which is the uh, Jelly Built KC Turbo Tunes, and seven is their drag race tune. Here we go. Whoops, I suppose you guys want to eat hey?
26 pounds of boost, but I got up to 1400 degrees on the EGTs. Okay, Garmin, save video. If this doesn't scream Mexico, I don't know what does. One more pull, guys. This is in uh, position 11. I should get the, uh, this is SDK2 toes 11. I don't want that. I want a, uh, I don't know, like Hot Street 8. This is going to be uh, Jelly Belt's Hot Street tune. Probably too heavy to be running it. Uh, and I will get the screen recording going here for you. Okay, a street tune. Uh, this will have shorter injection pulse width. Look right here, the, the uh, injection pulse width. Hopefully it doesn't get to 3,000 microseconds. Minimal smoke, actually. RPM and 1400 degrees on the exhaust, but we're still not getting high pressure oil past 2400 PSI. So, although this has addressed most of my issues, let me roll up this window here. Although I'm very happy with the way the turbo is performing now, and these tunes are really nice. Uh, the excitement is probably lost on my face because I've gone out two or three times to try it on them uh, with various camera problems and, and uh, reasons that I couldn't really make this video work properly. Uh, so I'm super happy with the way these tunes are working and having the ability to change the tunes is amazing. Uh, I just, uh, I think that's about as far as we can push it right now and unless we get a uh, a high pressure oil pump that can sustain pressures above 2200 psi. So, I think that's going to be it for this Turbo Trilogy Turmoil video series. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone at KC Turbos, Jason James, KC, Houston, the others whom I've forgotten. Uh, they're a great customer service team. If you're looking for a turbo, consider KC Turbos. They produce uh, turbos for Power Strokes, Cummins, and Duramax motors. So check that out. So yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this time. Once again, big thank you to KC Turbos. Thanks to all of our supporting channel members whose names are whipping by right here. Uh, your support means that I can make the videos that I want to make and not fight uh, uh, YouTube algorithms trying to get that hot new hotness. So thank you very much and to everyone who's watched. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.